Hello and welcome to Esri Australia's video tutorial on how to prepare for data collection using the field app ArcGIS Quick Capture. ArcGIS Quick Capture is a mobile data collection app that allows anybody in the field to capture accurate data and return it to the office or the classroom for further use. Field workers engage with a user-friendly digital form on mobile devices to capture and edit data. Quick Capture works even when disconnected from the internet. The next time your device is connected to the internet, the collected data will automatically transfer to your ArcGIS online map. It is free to download and can be downloaded onto personal phone devices or tablets. All you need is your ArcGIS login credentials. Before we can prepare our data collection form in Quick Capture, we first must create the feature layers for the data we're wanting to collect. So the first job is to log into ArcGIS online using your normal credentials. Go to content, my content, and then click on create in the top left corner. And we want to choose the first option, feature layer. On the side panel, click on build a layer. And the type of data we're going to be collecting today is points, lines, and polygon data. So we're going to select this option and hit create. Before we go to next, I'm going to change the names of these layers to reflect what I'm going to be collecting. In this case, we're going to be going to public parks and collecting data on the services and facilities in public parks. So for point layer, I'm going to rename this park amenities. For line layer, I'm going to name it paths, as we might come across bike paths, walking paths, maybe even some trails. Polygon layer, I'm going to rename this fields, courts, grassed areas and that might need to change depending on the type of data we decide we want to collect but for now that's a good starting point i'm going to click next i'm going to set the map extent so i want anybody in within australia to be able to collect data using my digital form uh, using uh, regardless of where they are so i'm happy with this however if your students are only collecting data in a specified area you might decide to zoom right into that particular area when you're happy with the map, map extent, click Next. You'll need to create a title for your feature layer that you're creating. In my case, because this is a training tutorial, I'm going to write that nice and clear for myself. Quick capture. It's given me a tag already. If you wanted to add some of your own tags, that's fine. And you might decide you want to add a summary as well. Once you're happy that you've filled this out, you can click done and your feature layers will essentially begin to be created. Once your feature layer has been created, its overview page will automatically open. From here, we want to go to data. We want to click on fields and you'll notice that your three feature layers, park amenities, paths, fields, courts and grassed areas are up here. We need to set them with the type of data we want to collect within each feature layer. So I'm going to click on Park Amenities and I'm going to add a field. And for this field name, I'm going to keep it very similar. Uh, the field name can't have spaces, so you could separate it with a capital letter or an, uh, an underscore. I'm going to leave it as is. But the display name is where you can use those spaces. Now the type of data that we're collecting isn't string data, which is um, character based. We just want integer data as we're only collecting a single point at a time. I'm going to leave default value as it is. And I'm going to add new field. And it will update this, uh, our fields and you'll notice that we have our new field name here. So click on that new field name and we want to create a list for it. So when we're creating a list, we need to think about the types of data we might be collecting in a park that, that are, of course, point data. An example would be bubblers. And we want to give that a stored value of zero, as that's an integer. And we're going to repeat that process for all of the different types of data, of point data we might be collecting in uh, a public park. I'm going to add four today. There are, of course, many more, but for today's purpose, I simply just want to give, give you a feel for it. So add as many as you would like to your particular um, uh, feature layer. 
so that you get a real feel for it when you go and, and practice in, the, in the, the public park of your choice. Once you're happy with your list, simply click Save. Now we need to exit this field that we've just created by clicking on the cross. And before we move on to our next layer, it might, might be that when, when you have your students collecting data in the field, you want them to take brief notes. If that's the case, we actually need to add an extra field so that we can enable that setting in Quick Capture. So I'm going to click Add. I'm going to write Notes. And this, in this instance, we actually want to keep it as a string because we need to allow our data collectors to enter characters, to enter text on their phones or tablets. I'm going to leave the length at 256 as I don't want notes to be too extensive. And I'm going to add new field. And again, it will add it to our field list. In this case, we don't need to go into notes to enter any lists because all it really is is a place for students or uh, data collectors to add that new information. Now we need to repeat those steps for paths and for fields and courts. So again, I make sure that the layer that I want to add fields to is selected paths and I'm going to add. And for field name, I'm going to call it type of path and for display name, paths will do. I'm going to change it back to integer and I'm going to add a new field. And there's my new field. I'm going to click on that, create a list for it. And again, I'm going to come up with some options. Bike path with a stored value of zero. Walking path stored value of one and hey this this particular park might have some um, trails and I'm going to give that to if there are other um, paths that might be pertinent to your particular public park you might decide that you need to add them too we're going to click save and again we're going to exit this field we're going to add a notes section it might be that we want our data collectors to notice how worn or how damaged or any hazards that might exist on a particular path. And lastly, you will uh, repeat those steps for fields, courts and grassed areas. Now I'm going to let you go through this process yourself and I'll see you on the other side of this. Now that you've created your fields for your final feature layer, fields, courts and grassed areas, we want to go back to overview. And we want to open our feature layers in a map viewer and we're going to create and save a map that's attached to this feature layer now. So our first step is to make sure that our feature layers appear down the side, which they do. At the moment, they include the title as well as um, the particular feature layer. We might rename these really quickly by simply clicking on the more options button and pressing rename and I'm just going to lose the capital letters at the start so that it makes it easy for my data collectors and for my audience or my viewers of the map to quickly and easily identify what each layer is about. And once I'm happy with that, we don't have any data to display yet because we haven't created or um, gone and collected any data, but I'm going to click save and save as. And again, we need to name our map you might name it something else, um, but for me, I'm going to name it Training Tutorial Quick Caption Map. Add a tag. I'm going to keep mine the same, Data Collection, and make sure you're happy with where it's being saved in ArcGIS Online. Click Save Map. Now from here, we need to prepare the symbology of each of these feature layers. So we're going to start with Fields and Courts. I'm going to click on, hover over the feature layer, and I'm going to click on the shapes icon, the change style icon. And I'm happy with it just showing, like, actually I want to click on fields, courts, and, and grassed areas, sorry. And I want each type of um, list, a listed field to be a different icon. So I'm going to choose types, unique symbols. I'm going to click on options and I can change these colors to something a bit more appropriate 
For instance, grassed areas to me would make sense that this is actually the green color that I'm seeing. And I'm going to select that green, which means that paved courts, I'm probably going to choose a different color, maybe a washed out, a washed out blue. Car park, I'm going to leave as red and playing fields and ovals, I might again change that to a, a deeper green just to keep some form of symbology um, with what colors usually represent. Once I'm happy with my symbology for those colors, I'm gonna click on OK. I'm going to click Done. And I'm going to go up to Edit. And you'll notice that now, those feature layers, instead of looking generic, like this line and like this point, actually have symbology attached to them. And I need to make sure to lock this symbology in to go down, click Manage, make sure that the layer that I just amended, fields, courts, and grassed areas is selected. And I wanna save those changes. I wanna lock those changes in. And that means that whenever someone uses this particular feature layer, even if it's not with the quick capture form, this symbology will be attached to those layers. I'm gonna go back to details and I'm gonna repeat the following for paths. Again, I need to choose the attributes of that new field we created, which is paths and I want them to each have their own unique symbol. So I go into options. I'm going to change the green away from um, that because parks have a lot of green spaces and I want to clearly be able to see my line. And so I'm gonna choose a orange for that. Trails with blue seems fine for me, bike path, should be away from car park areas, but I'm going to make that a different color too. I'm going to make that a deep purple. Once I'm happy again, I'm clicking OK and I'm clicking Done to lock them in. Go to Edit, Manage, go to Layer, select Paths and lock those changes in by pressing Save Changes. Now you could do this all at once after you'd selected the symbology for each. It depends on how you work. I don't want to forget, so I just um, save those changes for each layer as I go. From here, I'm going back to details and I'm gonna do the same with our last layer, park amenities. So clicking change style, selecting park amenities from our attribute table. Give it a moment to load. And if you're happy with uh, the simple colored dots, you could leave the symbology at that and lock it in, but I'm going to get a little bit more creative this time around. I'm going to go and select the icon next to barbecue. Go to shape. And then from the drop down, you want to click on the government option. And we've got a range of symbols here that we can use. If I'm looking for something that represents barbecue, I'm probably looking for something that is a food icon like this, which is perfect. So I'm going to click on that. You'll notice that at this point in time, it's way too small to see. So we're going to change the size to something like 20. I'm going to hit OK. And we're going to repeat this step, finding a suitable icon for each of our um, uh, options here. Sorry. So bubbler, something that represents water. Here we go. Perfect. And again, I need to make sure I change my size and make that a lot larger. I'm going to let you go through the final three, finding an appropriate symbol for each of your um, lists, for each of the items on your list. Remember that you can look in other um, particular categories as well. We just began in government. Once you've found a suitable symbol for each of your amenities, we're going to click OK, click Done, we're going to head back up to Edit, Manage, make sure our Park Amenities layer is selected, and we're going to save those changes to lock in those symbols. Once that save has taken place, we want to save our map once more. And once this is uh, being completed, we're going to head over to ArcGIS Quick Capture. In this video, you learn how to create and prepare your feature layers so that you can put them into a data collection form using Quick Capture. If you head over to part two, creating a data collection form in Quick Capture, we'll take you through the process. Thanks for tuning in.